The Pan CS1, whose NATO reporting name is SA-22 Greyhound, is currently the best available Russian land-based point air defense system. It combines mobility with advanced detection systems, auto cannons and missiles. These days, when we face the risk of the Second Cold War evolving into the Third World War, the importance of this air defense system is increasing exponentially. As the weapon detective, we are investigating the Pan CS-1 and its fight against modern air threats. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares. The Pan CS-1 has fought against aerial threats in the Middle East and the Maghreb for nearly a decade. It has been one of the key actors of the Russo-Ukraine conflict, which has now turned into a full-scale war. The effectiveness of the system is highly questionable. Westerners and Russians have shared different information on combat experiences. And both are after their own propaganda. Before we begin to investigate the Pan CS-1, let's look at the history and features of the system. The development of the Pansy Air Defense System, initially called Tungushka 3, began in 1990. But after the collapse of the USSR, the program experienced serious setbacks. Developing a new air defense system for the newly established Russian Federation had lost priority. Spending money on things that are not really needed was now a luxury for Moscow. Still, the first prototype was completed in 1994 and displayed at the MAX 1995 air show. The new vehicle, called Pan CS, was built on the Ural 53 8x8 truck. But later, Russia really had no money to continue the program. Some sources claim that the designer company KBP used its own funds for further progress after that. But Russia's debt to KBP had already reached 20 billion rubles in 1994. So, where did the company get the financing? Luckily, a rich country, the United Arab Emirates, needed a point air defense system. Thus, it became the financer of the further works. Now, KBP had plenty of money to redesign both the turret and the radar systems and remove any of the older subsystems of the Tungushka. The new production model, called Pan CS-1, was built on Kamaz 6560 8x8 truck. The live firing trials took place in 2006 and the final tests in 2007. The United Arab Emirates became the first customer of the Pan CS-1 and took over the first systems in 2007 which were built on the MAN SX-45 8x8 trucks instead of the Kamaz 6560s. Russia took the Pan CS-1 into the service in 2012. Its Russian Armed Forces designation is ZRPK-96BD. The Pan CS-1 is intended to be used against conventional air threats such as low and extremely low flying combat jets and helicopters. Russia claims that it is also a highly effective air defense system against precision munitions, cruise missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles, shortly UAVs. In general use, the Pan CS-1 provides air defense cover for military installations and other high-value civil targets such as industrial areas or government buildings. Also, its mission definition contains protecting the high-ranking air defense systems like the S-300 and S-400. Algeria, Equatorial Guinea, Ethiopia, Iraq, Myanmar, Oman, Russia, Serbia, Syria and the United Arab Emirates are the current users of the Pan CS-1. The Libyan National Army, shortly LNA, which fights against the internationally recognized Government of National Accord, shortly GNA, also operates the system. Some sources claim that Iran and Vietnam have the Pan CS-1, but we couldn't find any official information or visual confirmation. The Pan CS-1 has a three-person crew. Its combat rate is about 30 tons. There is no officially published full spec of the whole system. But the base vehicle, Kamaz 6560 8x8 truck, has a 400 horsepower Kamaz 740-35400 diesel engine, a road speed of 90 km per hour and a range of about 1000 km. It can negotiate 0.6 meter vertical steps and 2 meter trenches. The fording depth of the truck is 1.8 meters. The base vehicle of the United Arab Emirates vehicle is the MAN SX-45 8x8 truck. 
it has a 440 horsepower MAN D2066 LFG diesel engine, a road speed of 88 km per hour and a range of 750 km. There are also non-serial variants of the Pansy, which were built on the MZKT7930 and BAZ6909 O19 8x8 trucks and the GM352 M1E truck carrier. The Pansy SM variant, which is not operational yet, is built on a new 8x8 Kamas 53958 truck chassis. It has an armored cab. The Pan CSA is specifically designed for the Arctic region. It combines the DT30 MP T1 articulated track carrier and the turret. This variant has no auto cannon. The Pan CSA has an 800 horsepower YAMS 84710 diesel engine, a road speed of 45 km per hour and a range of 700 km. The naval variant of the Pan C air defense system is Pan C M. Its export model is Pan C EM. This system uses two 30mm 6-barrel Gursha 630K AO18KD rotary cannons, 8 missiles instead of 12, and an additional radar separate from the one fitted on top of the turret itself. The Pansy air defense system fires the 9M335 or 57E6 two-stage missiles. The 57E6 has a maximum speed of Mach 3.8. During the 18km range, the average speed of the missile is over Mach 2. It can be used against a target flying at a speed of 1000 meters per second. The effective range is between 1.2 to 20 kilometers and effective altitude of between 15 to 15,000 meters. The 57E6 has a 20 kilogram warhead. The maximum range of the 9M335 with a 16 kilogram warhead is 12 kilometers. Neither the 57E6 nor 9M335 have seekers which make them low cost missiles. The vehicle mounted sensors direct them. The Russians claim that these missiles have a 70% first shoot to hit rate. By using the experience gained in Syria, Russia developed the Pansy SM variant. It can fire the new 57E6 ME missile, which has a 25 kg warhead, a range of 40 km, an effective altitude of 18,000 meters, and a maximum speed of Mach 5. Its export variant is the Pansy S1M. There are 750 pieces of ready-to-fire ammunition for each of the two 30mm 2A38M auto cannons. The guns have a maximum effective range of 4000 meters and a rate of fire of 2500 rounds per minute for each. The 30mm auto cannons are also practical for self-defense against nearby enemy ground units. The Russian claims that the Pan CS1 had the counter rocket, artillery and mortar shortly CRAM capability. The target acquisition radar is folded on the move to decrease the total height. It can detect an aircraft with a radar cross-section of 2 square meters at a range of 30,000 meters. The Pan CS1 can simultaneously track 24 out of 30 targets within a range of 28,000 meters. The UHF-EHF dual-band Pazatron Shilliam Passive Electronically Scanned Array target tracking radar and electro-optical sensors are in the front part of the turret. After the target is detected, whether the missile or the barrel weapon system would be more appropriate is determined automatically. The new L-band search radar of the Pansy SM variant has a range of 75 km. Its new multifunctional EHF fire control radar can track the targets at a range of 40 km. The Pansy air defense system can work in a completely passive mode, which means it can attack a target without using its radars. The Pan CS1 can give its best performance when stabilized to the ground during firing thanks to the four hydraulic rams. It can be ready to fire in less than 5 minutes after stopping. But the system can also fire missiles and guns on the move if all radars and sensors are in use. The reaction time of the Pan CS1 is 4 to 6 seconds. The Westerners and Russians disagreed about the Pan CS1's combat effectiveness. Naturally, men are blind in their own cause. Both sides of the fight involving the Pan CS1 have told different stories. The pro Turkey GNA and Turkish sources claim that over 15 Pan CS1s have been destroyed by air and artillery attacks in Libya. The GNA has denied these claims, even though there are some video footage as evidence. Shooting down a Turkish unarmed RF 4E reconnaissance aircraft near Latakia in 2012 is the first known combat action of the Pan CS1 in Syria. After that, this system has fought mainly against UAVs. 
The Russian sources assert that the Pan CS-1 has managed to shoot down at least 20 UAVs, including the Heron, Bayraktar TB-2, RQ-21A and intercept many artillery records. They also claim that this system destroyed 23 out of 103 US, British and French cruise missiles launched against Syrian targets on April 14, 2018. However, the US Department of Defense stated no Allied missiles were shot down during this attack. According to the official Russian sources, alongside the Buk M2s, the Pan CS-1s intercepted at least 80 Israeli air-to-surface missiles in 2021. In exchange, only six systems were damaged or destroyed during the war in Syria. Of course, Western countries say that they have suffered far less casualties while they have eliminated more Pan CS-1s. Only Turkey has mentioned at least eight victories against the Pan CS-1 in Syria. Yet, Russia has denied some video footage about the destruction of the system and argued that they are CGI. In 2017, a Pan CS-1 of the United Arab Emirates mistakenly shot down a Saudi UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter as a friendly fire accident. The Russian sources claim that this system managed to destroy some Ukrainian UAVs during the 2014 Russian invasion of Crimea. Today, the Pan CS-1 is fighting in this country again. However, the footages from the region prove that the armed forces of Ukraine can still use its armed UAVs and helicopters effectively. Combat footage shows us that the Pan CS-1 is neither as effective as the Russians claim, nor as ineffective as the Westerns claim. It is a relatively good solution against the modern UAVs, but the system has no total dominance over them. According to Turkish sources, the Pan CS-1's radar can detect armed UAVs like the Bayraktar TB-2, but it experiences difficulty identifying them even when the electronic countermeasure systems are not in use. When the electronic jamming is activated, the radar becomes totally blind. The fact that Russia started working on the Pan CSM variant after the Syria experiences, which has a more powerful radar, supports this claim. While the Russians say that the Pan CS-1 has CRAM capability, the experiences show otherwise. Yes, the system managed to intercept some artillery rockets, but one of the most common ways to destroy a Pan CS-1 is to use the long-range howitzers. The modern Western electronic intelligence equipment can easily intercept the radar signal of the system and precisely locate it. Then, long-range artillery shells are sent to the position. The combat report shows us that the Pan CS-1 cannot effectively intercept them. Some military experts, like Viktor Murakovsky, argues that the system has reached only a 19% success rate in Syria and it is a complete failure. But according to our analysis, being a complete failure is an exaggerated argument. Yes, many foreign users of the system are pro-Russia. However, Algeria, Oman and the United Arab Emirates have money and they have good relationships with the West. Still, they have chosen the Pan CS-1. Actually, we should also acknowledge that there is no proper alternative to it in the West. Some sources claim that the USSR intended to create the successor of the 2S6 Tungushka with the Pan C program. But as you may see, the Pan CS-1 has neither suitable mobility nor ballistic protection to accompany the armored units in open fields combat. Even the footage of a bogged down and abandoned Russian Pan CS-1 in the war in Ukraine proves the argument. It is not a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun with missiles. The Pan CS-1 is a surface-to-air missile system with autocannons. The 30mm guns are the secondary weapons. Despite its shortcomings, the Pan CS-1 is one of the best options in its class and it is one of the most valuable Russian air defense assets in the wars in Libya, Syria and Ukraine. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares.